across the country as well. Good on you all for coming out today. I think we have to be at a time like this forever vigilant that on the eve of a federal election, as Sandy has said, race, fear, and a debate over asylum seeker and refugees in this country has dominated politics for far too long. In 2001, on the eve of that election, when John Howard was Prime Minister, when he lied about the children overboard, when he refused to allow the hundreds of men, women and children on board the Tampa to seek safety here in Australia, that was my political awakening. That was the first time I said, you know what, I can't just have an opinion. I actually had to do something about it. Right? It was the first time I stood on a polling group that, in that election. And I still remember those dark pictures of John Howard saying, we will decide. We will decide who comes to this country. Well, it is that debate that has pushed this issue so far in this country that we now have people like Pauline Hanson given a regular spot on morning television. It is that type of politics in this country that has allowed some people to blame the victims of what happened in the horror in Christchurch only last month. It is some people who have used fear for political gain that has allowed this sliding and this normalisation of this fear and racist rhetoric to take hold. But, and I, I want to stress this, I think Australians are sick of it. I think they're seeing through this cynical politics and it's time that we have a more compassionate and humane approach to those coming to Australia seeking our protection, our care and our love. Now, the Medivac Bill is one example of this. And we fought for a long time in the Federal Parliament, my Greens colleagues and I, for an independent assessment of people being able to come to this country so that they can get them out of those detention centres so we don't keep people locked up and make them sick as an example to others. And that is what this policy is about. Let's not forget, it is all about, quote, deterrence. And what is the deterrent? That we will make you so ill and so sick, so tortured, that you'd prefer to stay in Afghanistan being tortured by the Taliban than risk your life and your family's life to get to Australia. How? abhorrent is that as a policy and yet that is what we've got so when this medivac bill came to the floor of the parliament and we were debating it i was overwhelmed by the amount of support that we had amongst the australian community to get this done they have had enough they want compassion they want a humane policy and they really want people like peter dutton to either shut his mouth or get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that where this nastiness leads, because it's not just refugees that Peter Dutton wants to pick on. He's now picking on disabled Australians right around this country. Those comments, and I don't care what political party you're a part of. We need a better standard of political debate in this country. It's, it is gone beyond party politics. And the Labor candidate, standing against Peter Dutton, deserves respect. She deserves respect as a political opponent and as a member of her community who's willing to stand up, put herself forward. We live in a free and open democracy. That's partly why a lot of people who come here as refugees come to Australia. Because we're not a dictatorship. You can be involved in politics. We encourage it. And then to have the minister use her disability 
Well, that is about the character of that man. Somebody just got said one. character. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Evil. This is the politics of this country that we have to get rid of. And I am very, very hopeful that the Australian community is seen through this cynical political ploy. But on the eve of the election, we have to be absolutely aware of just where this could go. Because when politicians get desperate, they do desperate things. And this is the opportunity, we've got six weeks. This is the opportunity to say, we want to be a country that is welcoming, that is compassionate, and that is fair. And in this country, we will promote and support those in our community who are standing for election, who appeal to our better angels who don't take the low road, who don't use fear and division. And I think as individuals, we have to set that example in when we're talking to people, when we're debating policy. But if you hear, if you hear a candidate or a volunteer or a supporter or someone in your community demonizing refugees and migrants in this country, it's up to us to pull them up on it, to call it out. Because I don't want to see what happened in Christchurch happen in Australia. I don't want to see what happened in New Zealand just forgotten in a month's time. We need to be aware of how easily that has occurred. The media, political players, and this issue of refugees and asylum seekers is front and centre of how that normalisation of fear and division has occurred. Refugees have been scapegoats for this issue for far too long. And as Sandy said, people come to our country seeking our protection and our help because they want to be part of what is the lucky nation. A community where we look after each other. Where you can contribute and know that you'll get looked after when times are tough. That we don't divide people based on their religious beliefs or what country they were born in. That's the Australia I was born into. It's the Australia my daughter was born into and it's the Australia we have to fight to keep. This is up to us. It is our values on the line. Our values on the line, those values of humane respect, compassion. Let me tell you, there's nothing weak about the strength of compassion. It is weak to feed your political support of fear, division, and the only people who do that are cowards. Call them out, stand up to them, and promote a welcoming, humane and compassionate Australia because I know that's what you're all here for as well. Yes.